Uh, hello everyone, so in this part I will be discussing about uh, recipes for uh, pregnant mothers, uh, both vegetarian and non-veg recipes. Uh, as you can see that uh, we have uh, and there we have one more tutorial on nutritious recipes for uh, vegetarian mothers uh, and these recipes are again extremely high in a uh, lot of these nutrients that we discussed uh, which are required in pre-pregnancy pregnancy period. So of course they are high on you know uh, like different recipes have different nutrients but you know you can make those couple of recipes in a day uh, and mother will get uh, by and large you know uh, main thing is protein. Uh, so, if you can really cover the protein and I do recommend higher amount of protein for pregnant mothers uh, you know than what is generally recommended uh, and that because we have remember that our children are born small ok. The average birth weight uh, all over the world uh, as per WHO growth chart is 3.2-3.3 kg but in India it is only 2.7. Okay. Now, when you have uh, that small baby that means obviously mother is not getting enough adequate uh, nutrients and uh, uh, in my opinion the most important nutrient which is required for baby's growth is protein. Okay. Because uh, as I explained to you in my earlier session that when you uh, there was a study which was published where they showed the body composition of a uh, you know uh, Indian child versus a Caucasian baby which is a white baby you know we our babies had much uh, uh, smaller leaner mass ok, uh, their babies had almost double the amount of lean mass, uh, we had high amount of fat, uh, their babies had less 50 percent less fat and our visceras were small and their babies had viscera which was almost double the size ok. So, uh, so, make sure that you know I'll double the weight, I'm talking about not the size but the weight ok. So, uh, just remember to kind of uh, focus on protein in mothers. One more thing I see in India uh, is that mothers they tend to have lot more laddus ok. So, they have this uh, you know uh, good ke laddus and jaggery and you know uh, I feel that uh, mothers here they take too much of uh, simple sugars, they, they also take too much of this carbohydrate you know. So, there is so much of energy density in the food. Uh, so, many mothers they put on a lot of weight, but that weight is not going into the baby you know. So, you want to make sure that you you know you teach mothers what food to eat so that she herself does not put on too much weight and that weight goes to uh, baby. Actually in one of my uh, my first session you know uh, you have must have seen the story of Kailash right. So, in Kailash what was happening that that uh, his wife had two miscarriages because of prematurity because her she hardly had any protein in her diet you know. Um, she was eating predominantly carbohydrate rich food, she was not eating you know even though she so she was tribal, she was not allowed to eat uh, you know food which were high in protein like chicken and eggs and all. Uh, and so then once uh, for the third time when Kailash came to our training you know we kind of made him understand the importance of protein. So, he kind of went against the whole village including his own mother and the Baba who was giving all this uh, wrong advices. So, we had to uh, kind of uh, you know uh, uh, kind of explain to him the importance of protein and once he changed uh, his wife's diet. Now remember when she came to me uh, she was about 2 months pregnant ok when she they gave me the news that uh, his wife was pregnant and that time her weight was only 35 kg. You can imagine she have a, she was only 35 kg and here I was with 2 month pregnant woman who was only 35 kg and I wanted to make sure that this time she would not have premature baby because we, that area does not have infrastructure to save those premature babies right. So, we worked on her diet we basically asked uh, you know Kailash to bring everything which was uh, kind of feasible for him to bring which was affordable which was local you know and he fought with 
the whole world. And then he took care of his wife and uh, you know the birth weight of this baby was almost 3.1 uh, kilogram. This was a girl child, 3.1 kilogram, pretty good. Um, I do not see that, that kind of weight, weight even in a, a privileged mother's babies you know. Uh, I, I do see a lot of them have 2.7, 2.8, sometimes 2.6 you know. Uh, so remember, to remember protein you know. Uh, of course other nutrients are important but when you have protein rich food uh, you know specifically if you are non veg so it has all other nutrients you know it has zinc it has vit uh, retinol which is vitamin a it has you know um, choline it has uh, folate it has so many other different nutrients you know uh, by eating that food but again if you're vegetarian then you can just focus on your pulses dals you know some of these vegetables are high on protein okay cruciferous is good amount of protein they can even have mushrooms uh, nuts seeds you know uh, whatever is locally available okay so do focus on protein and try to get that weight on the baby not so much on the mother now we do deal with a lot of undernourished mothers too so obviously undernourished mothers will definitely need a uh, lot more protein and uh, you know of course other good fats and carbohydrate and all uh, but again you know uh, kind of have more balance so that we have good amount of uh, birth weight uh, in that mother just like how uh, you know and one more thing I wanted to tell you that Kailash, uh, Kailash's wife although she was only 35 kg uh, by the time she uh, kind of delivered she had gained almost 11 to 12 kgs ok. So, she had gained uh, kind of good amount of weight but all that weight pretty much that weight had gone to baby she looked lean she did not look uh, at all that if she had put on weight but all that good weight that she had gained had gone to the baby okay and then that prevented premature delivery also okay so remember that to have a good amount of protein decrease uh, simple sugars you know mothers have this tendency to eat sweet food obviously because of craving you know but uh, tell her to have kind of a lot more uh, protein rich food than eating some of the simple sugars okay so thank you very much you have uh, have a look at our three recipes videos veg non veg recipes and nutritional recipes for pregnant mothers okay thank you so much welcome to the spoken tutorial on vegetarian recipes for pregnant women in this tutorial we will learn about the importance of a nutrient dense diet a few nutritious vegetarian recipes First, let us understand the importance of a nutrient-dense diet. The nutrient requirements during pregnancy increases. This is mainly for the development of the cells. Nutrient-dense diet supports the growth and development of the fetus. Therefore, it is important to consume a well-nourished diet. A well-nourished diet helps to prevent complications during pregnancy. The diet should be rich in proteins, good fats, vitamins and minerals. Eating a nutrient-dense diet may provide relief from nausea and constipation. It also reduces the risk of anemia, pregnancy diabetes and hypertension. It also reduces the chance of low birth weight baby and premature delivery. Apart from a good diet, ensure to drink 8 to 10 glasses of water every day. Along with intake of nutritious diet, its nutrient absorption is also important. Phytates, oxalates and tannins present in the food affect nutrient absorption. Nutrient absorption can be enhanced by using various cooking techniques. For example, soaking, sprouting, roasting and fermentation, steaming, sautéing and boiling are some other examples. To enhance the nutrient content, we can also use various nutritious powders. Powder of either drumstick leaves, curry leaves or nuts and seeds can be used. The method to prepare these powders has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for more details. Healthy weight gain throughout 9 months of pregnancy is essential. It is recommended to avoid sugar, jaggery, processed and ready-to-eat foods. Avoid caffeine, alcohol, 
and tobacco. Do not consume medicine without a doctor's approval. More about this has been explained in another tutorial. Now let us begin with the first recipe which is black eyed bean idli. To prepare this recipe we will need 2 tablespoons of each whole pearl millet, whole foxtail millet. We will also need 1 tablespoon each of sprouted black eyed bean, sprouted whole Bengal gram, fenugreek seeds, roasted sunflower seeds. We will also require 1 fourth tablespoon of each drumstick leaves powder, curry leaves powder, nuts and seeds powder and salt. First, start with sprouting black eyed bean and whole Bengal gram. I will explain the procedure for sprouting. Soak black eyed beans and whole Bengal gram separately overnight. Drain it in the morning and tie them separately in a muslin cloth. Leave them in a warm place to germinate for two days. Remember that different beans take different time to sprout. When sprouts are ready, soak the millets and fenugreek seeds together. Soak them for 6 to 8 hours or overnight. Drain and grind millets with sunflower seeds and sprouts into a smooth batter. For grinding, you can use a stone grinder or a mixer. After grinding, keep it covered to ferment overnight or for 6 to 8 hours. Before cooking, add salt and all other powders to the batter and mix well. Grease the idli mold and pour the batter into it. Place it in the cooker or a steamer and cook for 10 to 12 minutes. Or you can fill one fourth of the cooker with water and steam without the whistle. Remove the idlis after 7 to 8 minutes and serve hot. This recipe is rich in protein, calcium and iron. It is also rich in folate, magnesium and potassium. The next recipe is millet kichadi. To make this, we will need 1 tablespoon of each whole barnyard millet, sprouted pearl millet, sprouted soya bean, 1 chopped onion, 1 chopped carrot, 1 chopped beetroot. We will also need 1 tablespoon each of grated fresh coconut and poppy seeds. We will also require half cup of curd. A 1 fourth teaspoon of each ingredient, turmeric powder, coriander and cumin seeds powder, cumin seeds, drumstick leaves powder, curry leaves powder, salt to taste and 1 tablespoon of oil or ghee. Note that I soaked pearl millet and soya bean separately for sprouting. One ingredient may take longer to sprout or both may sprout at the same time. In my case, soya bean took longer to sprout. Soak banyard millet for 6 to 8 hours in water. Drain the water and keep it aside. Heat oil in a pressure cooker and add cumin seeds. Now, Add all the vegetables, sprouted millets, sprouted soya bean and curd. Add the grated coconut, poppy seeds, salt, powders and all the dry spices. Mix well. Next, add 1 cup of water. Pressure cook the kichadi for 2 whistles. Once done, serve hot. This recipe is rich in proteins, good fats, vitamin A and calcium. It is rich in minerals like iron, folate, magnesium and phosphorus. Our third recipe is moong wrap. For this recipe, we will need malted ragi flour, 1 fourth cup, Bengal gram flour, 1 tablespoon, sprouted moong, half cup, crumbled paneer, 1 fourth cup, chopped onion, 1 tablespoon, Chopped tomato 1 tablespoon. We will also need 1 fourth teaspoon of each turmeric powder, coriander and cumin seeds powder, cumin seeds, curry leaves powder, drumstick leaves powder, 1 tablespoon of oil or ghee. We will also need half lemon, 
and salt to taste. Procedure Sprout the moong as mentioned earlier in this tutorial. To prepare the malted ragi flour, soak the ragi overnight. Now tie them in a muslin cloth and keep it for 6 to 8 hours or overnight. Once it sprouts, dry roast the ragi sprouts on an iron skillet. After this, grind it using a grinder to make flour and then keep it aside. Heat oil on an iron pan. Add cumin seeds, dry spices and powders. Add chopped onions and tomatoes and saute it till soft. Next, add sprouted moong and let it cook for 10 minutes. Add paneer and salt and cook for 5 to 10 minutes. Add 1 fourth cup of water and allow it to cook for another 5 to 10 minutes. Turn off the flame and allow it to cool. Now add lemon juice and keep the mixture aside. Next, mix the malted ragi flour and Bengal gram flour in a bowl. Add lukewarm water and prepare a dough. Now roll out round shaped parathas. Cook the parathas on both sides on an iron pan. Place the paratha on a plate and add the moong mix in between the paratha. Now roll them into a wrap and serve. This recipe is rich in protein and good fats. It is also a source of calcium, iron, folate, magnesium and zinc. Apart from the millets mentioned here, you can use other millets and grains. For example, sorghum, kodo millet, broken wheat or whole wheat. Likewise, you can use other sprouts as well. For example, sprouted chickpeas, sprouted green peas or sprouted moth beans. Besides the seeds mentioned, you can also use other locally available seeds. For example, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds and garden cress seeds. Include all these recipes for a healthy pregnancy and good health of the baby. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on non-vegetarian recipes for pregnant women. In this tutorial, we will learn about the importance of non-vegetarian foods and various non-vegetarian recipes for pregnant women. Let us first learn the importance of various non-vegetarian foods. Non-vegetarian foods like chicken, meat, fish, prawns, organ meat are rich in protein, zinc, choline, iron and calcium. These nutrients are essential for the growth and development of the fetus. They aid in brain development of the baby and help in maintaining the health of the mother. To get these nutrients, non-vegetarian foods should be consumed during pregnancy. Now, we will look at a few non-vegetarian recipes. Let us begin with our first recipe which is Kerala style egg curry. For this recipe, we will require 2 whole boiled eggs, 1 medium sized chopped onion, 1 chopped tomato, 2 cloves of garlic, half inch piece of ginger, half sprig of curry leaves, 1 4 teaspoon of each, garam masala powder, pepper powder, Kashmiri red chilli powder, turmeric powder, 1 tablespoon chopped coriander leaves, 1 tablespoon oil and salt to taste. First we will see how to prepare boiled eggs. Fill a bowl with cool water up to 1 inch. Place eggs in it and cover with a lid. Allow the water to boil over high heat. Then, cook for 6 to 7 minutes over medium heat for perfect hard boiled eggs. Now, remove the hard shell of the eggs and keep it aside. Next, heat oil in a kadai. Add ginger, garlic, onions and curry leaves. Turn the flame to medium and saute until onions turn golden brown. After this, add all the dry masalas and saute till you get the aroma of condiments. Then, add chopped tomato and salt. Now, add 1 cup of water and bring mixture to boil. Simmer for a few minutes until tomatoes begin to boil. 
After this, add the boiled eggs into it. Cover the kadai and simmer the eggs for 10 to 15 minutes. Turn off the flame and add chopped coriander leaves. Stir the gravy gently so that the eggs do not crumble. Serve it in a serving bowl. Moving forward, let us learn about the second recipe, chicken chetinad. For this, we will require 100 grams of chicken breast, 1 tablespoon oil, 1 large onion finely chopped, 1 medium tomato, 1 to 2 sprigs curry leaves and 1 bay leaf. For marination, we will need 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 4 teaspoon chilli powder, 1 tablespoon ginger garlic paste and salt to taste. For gravy, we will need half tablespoon coriander seeds, half teaspoon fennel seeds, 1 teaspoon peppercorn, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, 2 cardamoms, 2 cloves, half inch cinnamon stick and 2 tablespoon shredded coconut. To begin with, marinate the chicken by mixing chicken, turmeric, chilli powder, ginger garlic paste and salt in a bowl. Keep it at room temperature for 30 to 45 minutes. On a low flame, dry roast coriander seeds. After 2 to 3 minutes, add the remaining spices. Roast until you get the fine aroma of spices and keep it aside. Then, roast the coconut for a few minutes. Allow the roasted spices and coconut to cool. Using a stone grinder or mixer grinder, blend them into a fine paste by adding 1 tablespoon water. Keep this paste aside. Add tomatoes to the blender to form a puree. Now, in a kadhai, heat oil. Add onions and saute till it turns golden color. Add chicken and saute again for 4 to 5 minutes on medium flame. Add tomato puree, turmeric, salt and chilli powder. Mix well and cook till the oil separates. After this, add the ground paste and curry leaves. Saute this mixture for 2 to 3 minutes. Pour 1 4th cup water and cook with the lid closed till chicken turns tender and soft. Allow it to simmer until the gravy turns thick. Garnish with curry leaves and serve. Please remember, this recipe can be prepared by using any one of the following mutton, organ meat, prawns and fish. Now, let us look at the third recipe, chicken liver sukkah. The ingredients required for this recipe are 100 grams chicken liver, 1 finely chopped onion, 1 chopped tomato, 6 cloves of garlic, 1 fourth inch of ginger, 2 tablespoon finely chopped coriander leaves, 1 tablespoon oil, salt to taste and 1 tablespoon lemon juice. To begin with, in a blender, add onion, tomato, garlic, ginger and coriander leaves. Grind this mixture into a fine paste. Apply this paste over the chicken liver and keep this at room temperature for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, heat oil in a kadhai and add the liver with marination paste to it. Mix it well. Add 1 4th cup water and cook it on low flame for 10 minutes. After this, increase the flame and allow it to cook well. Once well cooked, turn off the flame. Add lemon juice on cooling and serve garnished with washed and chopped coriander leaves. You can also use mutton liver for this recipe. The next recipe is fish in spinach curry. For this we need 2 small pieces of mackerel fish, 1 cup of spinach leaves, 1 chopped onion, 1 chopped tomato, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, 2 to 3 cloves of garlic, 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, cumin powder, 1 4 teaspoon black pepper powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, 1 tablespoon white sesame seeds, 1 teaspoon oil and salt to taste. To start with, Wash, clean and cut the mackerel into two parts and keep aside. In a kadhai, heat oil and add cumin seeds. Once it splutters, add raw spinach leaves and allow to cook for a minute. Now allow it to cool. Next, add cooked spinach, tomato and sesame seed in a grinder and make a puree. Heat oil in a kadhai and add chopped onions. Once the onions turn pink, Add chopped garlic and saute until it turns brown. Add all dry spices and saute until you get the aroma of spices. 
Now add the spinach puree and cook for a few minutes. Next, add fish pieces and cook well. Now, add one fourth cup water and salt. Allow to cook with the lid closed for five to seven minutes. Remove the lid and let it cook on medium flame for fifteen minutes. Once done, serve hot. Please remember, any locally available fish can be used for this recipe. Lastly, we will learn how to prepare meatball curry. For this recipe, we need hundred grams minced meat, one finely chopped onion. One chopped tomato, half tablespoon ginger paste, one tablespoon garlic paste, one tablespoon garam masala, one fourth cup fresh coriander leaves, and salt to taste. For gravy, one tablespoon oil, one finely chopped onion, one tablespoon garlic paste, half tablespoon ginger paste, half teaspoon cumin powder, one fourth teaspoon turmeric powder. And half teaspoon of each chili powder, garam masala, and coriander powder. One large chopped tomato and salt to taste. To begin with, wash and clean the minced meat well using a muslin cloth. Now mix minced meat and chopped onions in a bowl. Add ginger garlic paste, garam masala, coriander leaves, and salt. Divide this mixture in six equal parts and shape into balls. Heat oil in a kadhai and add the remaining chopped onions. Sauté until it is light brown in color. Add ginger garlic paste and sauté again for few minutes. Add all powdered spices: coriander seeds powder, cumin seeds powder, red chili powder, garam masala and turmeric. Now fry this for two to three minutes. Add tomatoes and sauté it for two to three minutes. Then add half cup water and salt to the masala. At this stage, slowly add the meatballs and allow to simmer. Stir gently after five minutes and cook until the meatballs are done. Serve hot in a serving bowl. Also, you can use minced chicken to prepare this recipe. It is important to remember that all these recipes are rich in protein, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin A, vitamin B12, folic acid and iron, zinc. Magnesium, sulfur, and choline. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on nutritious vegetarian recipes for pregnant women. In this tutorial, we will learn about. Importance of nutrient dense diet during pregnancy, preparation of a few vegetarian recipes, nutrient content of these recipes. First, let us understand the importance of nutrition during pregnancy. During pregnancy, a woman's body goes through physical and hormonal changes. The body's nutritional needs. increase what a woman eats is a source of nourishment for the growing fetus also thus the pregnant women should follow a healthy diet the diet should be rich in proteins good fats vitamins and minerals it will help in preventing any complications during pregnancy for example pregnancy diabetes hypertension anemia it may provide relief from nausea and constipation not consuming adequate nutrients can retard the development of the fetus the chances of premature delivery and low birth weight babies can increase hence a nutrient rich diet is recommended during pregnancy aside from eating well adequate water intake is necessary water helps in reducing the risk of urinary infections it also reduces constipation hence ensure to drink 8 to 10 glasses of water every day alcohol drugs and smoking 
should be avoided during pregnancy. These increase the risk of miscarriage and premature baby. Apart from intake of nutritious diet, its absorption is also important. Food has anti-nutrients like oxalates, phytates and tannins. Their presence affects nutrient absorption by the body. Nutrient absorption can be enhanced by various cooking techniques. For example, soaking, sprouting, roasting and fermentation. Steaming, sautéing and boiling are some other examples. Let us start with the preparation of our first recipe now. To make sprouted cowpea cutlet, the ingredients required are 1 fourth cup sprouted cowpea, 1 fourth cup amaranth leaves, 1 small chopped onion, 1 fourth cup roasted Bengal gram flour and 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste. You will also need spices such as 1 teaspoon coriander powder, 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder and 1 4 teaspoon chilli powder. Other ingredients required are 1 4 teaspoon curry leaves powder, 1 4 teaspoon drumstick leaves powder and 1 4 teaspoon nuts and seeds powder. Preparation of these powders have been discussed in another tutorial. Please visit our website for more information. You will also require 1 tablespoon oil or ghee and salt to taste. Before we begin, I will tell you the procedure for sprouting the cowpea. Wash and soak the cowpea overnight or for 6 to 8 hours in water. Later drain the water and tie it in a clean muslin cloth. Keep it in a warm place for 6 to 8 hours and allow it to sprout. In the same way, you can sprout chickpeas, soybeans, moth beans, etc. Let us proceed with the preparation of the cutlet now. Pressure cook the sprouted cowpea with 1 cup of water for 2 whistles. Once cooked, keep aside to cool. After it is cooled, mash the cowpea. Except oil, mix rest all ingredients with the mashed cowpea. Divide the mixture in small portions and shape it into small flattened cutlets. Now, grease the pan with oil. Shallow fry the cutlets on both sides till light brown in color. Sprouted cowpea cutlets are ready. This recipe consists of protein, good fats, calcium, magnesium and potassium. It is rich in other nutrients like iron, zinc and folate as well. If cowpea is unavailable, you can use other locally available beans. For example, chickpea, soybeans or moth beans. Instead of amaranth leaves, other green leafy vegetables can also be used. For example, spinach, fenugreek leaves, agati leaves, drumstick leaves. Let us now proceed to the next recipe which is mixed pulses uttapam. For preparation of this recipe, we will need 1 tablespoon split red gram, 1 tablespoon of split green gram, 1 tablespoon of Bengal gram, 2 tablespoons of split black gram, 1 tablespoon of barnyard millet and 1 tablespoon of little millet. Other ingredients required are 1 tablespoon of chopped tomato, 1 tablespoon of chopped carrot, 1 tablespoon of chopped capsicum, 1 tablespoon of chopped onion, 1 teaspoon of ginger garlic paste and 1 teaspoon of fenugreek seeds. Spices which will be required are half teaspoon coriander powder, half teaspoon cumin powder, and half teaspoon red chilli powder. Other ingredients required are 1 4 teaspoon nuts and seeds powder, 1 4 teaspoon drumstick leaves powder, and 1 4 teaspoon curry leaves powder. 
take one tablespoon of oil or ghee and salt to taste. Procedure: First, wash all the pulses, barnyard, and little millet properly, and soak them overnight. You can either soak them separately or all together. Soak the fenugreek seeds as well. Then grind the pulses, barnyard, and little millet into a smooth batter. Grind fenugreek seeds along with pulses. Keep it covered overnight in a warm place for fermenting. Once the batter rises, add other ingredients and mix well. Grease an iron pan with oil or ghee. Pour the batter on the pan in circular shape and make uttapam. Allow to cook on medium flame on both sides. Once done, serve hot. This recipe is rich in protein, good fats, vitamin A, calcium and magnesium. It is also rich in nutrients like iron, zinc, folate and phosphorus. Let us begin with our last recipe, bottle gourd steamed dumplings. In order to prepare this recipe, you will need 3/4 cup grated bottle gourd, 2 tablespoons sprouted sorghum, 2 tablespoons sprouted pearl millet and 1 tablespoon roasted Bengal gram flour. You will also need 1 tablespoon chopped coriander leaves, 1 tablespoon roasted peanuts powder and 1 teaspoon of roasted sesame seeds. Other ingredients required are 1 fourth teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 fourth teaspoon coriander powder, 1 fourth teaspoon chilli powder, 1 fourth teaspoon rumstick leaves powder, 1 fourth teaspoon curry leaves powder, 1 tablespoon of oil or ghee and salt to taste. Sprout sorghum and pearl millet as per the process mentioned previously. Please note that different ingredients take different time to sprout. For this recipe, sorghum and pearl millet sprouted at the same time. Upon sprouting, roast them on medium flame. Allow them to cool. Later, Grind them into a coarse powder. Except oil and sesame seeds, mix all the ingredients together. Add 1 to 2 teaspoons of water if needed to make a dough. Now spread oil on your palms. Divide the dough to form two long dumplings. Next, add water in a pressure cooker. Place a small stand inside the cooker to keep a plate on it. Place these dumplings on the plate in the pressure cooker. Cook them for 15 to 20 minutes without a whistle on the lid. Allow it to cool and let it rest for 10 minutes. Then cut them in circular shape. Now add little oil on the pan. Place the dumplings on the pan and shallow fry on both the sides. Make sure they are crispy and golden brown in color. Remove and garnish with roasted sesame seeds and serve. This recipe is rich in protein, fats, calcium, iron, zinc and folate. It is a rich source of vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin C. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.